starting with this workshop on the visualization of the job search, uh, we want to understand um, the data that is out there, uh, but that it's hard to understand in the form that it is uh, currently. So by making things visually, we can spot patterns more easily. And by seeing the data uh, represented visually in charts or diagrams or graphs, um, we can perceive it uh, much faster and much clearer. You've probably heard the saying that uh, a picture is a thousand words. So we understand much better things that we see in a visual way. Uh, and it's the same in this case. So we can understand more about uh, what our job market demands if we see this data represented in one place and in a visual way. So especially when there's uh, a lot of data and complex data, visualization techniques can help uh, to simplify this. Uh, so I will talk a little bit about um, uh, some tools um, and like how to get started with this. Uh, but first, uh, in the Jamboard that I have shared with you, we can talk a little bit about this. I will also share my screen. I hope you can see it. Um, and I hope you have also found the Jamboard so that you can also add things there as we speak. Um, so the first question that we have on this first board here is, uh, how have you visualized your job search so far? Um, have you tried in some way to look into what employers are looking for and then uh, making decisions about your learning um, or anything else? What have you done so far? Or if not, then um, what are your thoughts about how this could help you? I have tried like looking on to the online platforms to see like what are the tech skills which are mostly being asked nowadays by the companies. And yeah, then I plan out like where can I, what all the skills do I have right now? And where all I can work on to be like fit for those job positions. Most probably. So nothing like as a tool I've used specifically. I just go through the boards, uh, different places like Glassdoor is one of them to see like what the companies are looking for working nowadays. Just yeah, nothing as a visualizer tool. In order for us to visualize the data, we have to first have it from somewhere. So we have to gather the data. We need to sometimes maybe somehow filter it and arrange it uh, to the way that we want it to get the results that uh, we need. Uh, and only after that, we can make this data visual. Um, so professionals in uh, data visualization would also know about uh, mathematics and uh, graphics and uh, data analysis, uh, even data science, some of them. Uh, but the purpose of this work workshop is not to get so uh, technical about this because the purpose is not to learn about data visualization as such but to look at how can we utilize it as uh, people who are not in that field to help us in our job search. Um, so uh, I will present a few tools that we have here on the next board. And uh, these are uh, 
probably some of the most uh, easy to also start utilizing. Um, one that um, everybody knows is the Google Sheets or Excel. That's the most uh, ordinary and familiar tool, easily accessible to everybody. And it's the most simple thing you can do with this to get started right away. Then going a little bit further, there are some other data visualization platforms and uh, two of the easiest that I could find was the chart blocks and data wrapper. So they are very easy to uh, sign up to and easy to get started with. But um, sometimes it might be easy for you to do a combination. Like if you have some data on your Excel, then you can um, upload it to these kind of visualization tool platforms. And uh, just to show how these look, um, so this chart blocks, um, it's very simple. You can start away, start right away to making your charts and uh, you are asked to either type in data, copy paste or upload the data. So it's quite easy to get started. And data wrapper is quite similar to that as well um, with a bit more functionalities. So depending on what uh, level you are with this, how much you know about this, what you feel comfortable with. You can utilize just a simple Excel file or Google Sheets um, or these other uh, tools that are out there. I have also included Tableau here because it's one of the tools that has become very popular recently in this um, uh, data visualization space. Um, and um, this will require a little bit more effort from you, but uh, if you are comfortable with that, you can go ahead. And uh, Tableau is also, um, it has a free trial, but then you have to pay for it. So it can, it will cost you uh, something uh, versus these other tools that are free to use. Um, so today we will, just for reasons of simplicity, uh, do things with the Google Sheets and uh, this data can then be imported into chart blocks or data wrapper um, if you if you wish to use one of those or try things um, on your own with our exercise. Um, so we will continue with um, a data set that we have from the previous workshop. But before we go to that, um, do you have any questions at this point? Okay, no questions I get. So we can get into this right away. And uh, in the previous workshop, um, so now we are on the Excel, on the Google Sheets that was also shared with you. So you should be able to also um, edit things there. Uh, so our exercise was from the last workshop uh, to do a bit of research uh, across uh, 10 ed tech companies um, and then we looked into the skills that were the most uh, uh, spotted skills for the designers. So uh, today we will do kind of similar thing but for the jobs that are there for the um, uh, software development um, uh, roles. Uh, and um, then uh, we can see like what kind of conclusions uh, we can make um, out of this data and the analysis and then how can this 
really help us uh, how can we use the um, uh, data that we get from this uh, and you will also get to practice a little bit uh, with a case of your own uh, that I will uh, share a few more details um, a bit later uh, but uh, you will be able to utilize uh, the Jamboards and this Google Sheet uh, for that purpose. The exercise that we started last time was about um, choosing some fields that you have an intrinsic passion for, um, irrespective of your occupation. So. Uh, with field, uh, I don't mean like uh, I'm a software developer, so I uh, am interested in the field of software development. Uh, with uh, fields of interest, it can be something like education or healthcare or fintech or media, these kind of areas or gaming, because um, companies nowadays hire people who really care about what they do. So the edtech companies want to hire people who really care about learning. The gaming companies want to hire gamers, etc. So if uh, you are focusing your job search in this way and branding yourself as a person who fits the story of the company uh, and you really live and breathe what the company is about, then you will have higher chances of actually convincing them that yeah you should be part of their story uh, so in your individual jamboards that um, i had shared the other time with you xenia and sagar and i just shared with you too as well um, there were some pre-filled uh, cities or countries and fields that might be relevant for you and then in this exercise that we will do today, uh, you can pick uh, one of those fields that uh, you are the most interested in at the moment. And then we'll take some time to identify uh, what companies uh, in that particular field of interest uh, are relevant for you. Uh, you may have started this in the previous uh, workshop, uh, and now you can pick up where you left off of, or if you didn't uh, start then, then you can start now this, uh, this exercise. Uh, in your career plan, there was also a section about the types of companies. So like, how do you choose uh, which companies are right for you? Um, so we divided the companies into the leaders and disruptors in the career plan and there were some guidelines of what things to think about uh, in order to figure out whether you want to work with the leaders in an industry or the disruptors in the industry. Uh, so some of the things were like um, uh, with the leaders you have more stability, the brand is bigger, um, so do you want to work with such companies or do you want to work with new companies, for example, startups who are coming to disrupt the space of the bigger players? And uh, that can also um, be a big factor in the um, job search because it's important for you to know what kind of company you want to work with because these companies work very differently and uh, you might feel very comfortable working in a startup, you might not feel so comfortable in a uh, company with uh, 500 uh, employees and offices around the world, or it might be vice versa. But you need to figure this out for yourself, what fits you. Um, so uh, in today's exercise, you can pick one field and with these criteria that are in your career plan, you can uh, search online. Um, some things you can utilize is, of course, Google and then Crunchbase. And then uh, there's uh, another platform called F6S and LinkedIn. And uh, you can just type your fields 
uh, of companies and look what what results you will come up with and then looking at uh, when the company was founded or how many employees the company has you can figure out whether it's a leader or disruptor and then look deeper uh, into um, whether the company has opportunities available for you or whether it doesn't and then you have a different um, approach whether um, according to uh, whether there are opportunities available for you right now at the moment or not if we uh, start first with uh, our example case here so we have a software developer who is interested in the edtech companies and he has uh, or she has identified uh, 10 of uh, such companies uh, which are interesting and has looked into uh, what areas these companies have jobs and um, has identified which in which companies there is more potential for uh, him or her to uh, be hired. So um, what uh, I did in this case um, then I focused on four of these companies because uh, they seemed more interesting or they had more positions. And then I also, for the purposes of this exercise, analyzed only half of those um, job descriptions that were across these four companies. Um, so there's all kinds of titles there and then uh, the skills that were found in this uh, in these uh, job descriptions um, were quite 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 a long list so the more of uh, job descriptions you can find and the more of them you can do this for the uh, better results you will start getting and uh, let's say that um, I have found these now and uh, um, I have analyzed them here and then um, I find uh, um, one more company that um, or one more job that uh, just came up and I want to add um, the skills that uh, they need for that just to um, put them as well so there are usually this section with all the requirements so you can uh, cut it up into keywords so computer science software engineering uh, developing scalable web applications and etc etc so um, with time and doing this for um, all the job descriptions that come across and uh, you find them interesting then including them in such a list and you can probably figure out also an easier way maybe to do this but i did it now like this and then even just with google sheets having put this data here of course you can see from the numbers as well that some are some have been spotted there um, much more than others but let's try this set to uh, insert some sort of chart so we can um, choose here what kind of chart we want but this also shows us some peaks already but maybe it's not the best chart to use for this case uh, the chart we used the other time was this one but now we have a lot of skills here 
so it's it doesn't make much sense to have it like this either so looking into these different charts you can figure out which one is better for the representation that you want to make then uh, you can also now try a bit of this exercise for um, a few companies maybe at the moment or one or two companies um, or uh, if you had uh, requested or updated your match list uh, in Amplify and you have some results there, you could take some of those results already and analyze those job descriptions. Um, so we can take um, about uh, 15 to 20 minutes and uh, each of us can uh, look into this uh, Jamboard where you have uh, your cities, countries and fields and uh, pick um, one location where you would look into the opportunities um, and pick uh, one uh, field or then go to the Amplify platform and search uh, see what uh, what results you have in your list there um, and then you can identify maybe one or two companies as I said with a simple search on either Google or some of the platforms that I mentioned like Crunchbase or LinkedIn they are the most popular and where you can find a lot of information about companies in different fields uh, so then you would be looking at do they have uh, jobs available and this is best done through the websites of the uh, companies themselves so if you find um, these one or two companies that you are really interested in um, on LinkedIn or on Crunchbase or through Google you can then revert to their own websites and uh, check a bit more. Um, do they have some opportunities that are relevant for you? Um, so as most of you are not um, really looking for, actively looking for opportunities at the moment, you can then focus on this exercise to see which are the skills that um, these positions that you are interested in for the future um, so that in this time you can develop those skills and also um, be in touch with what the companies demand because the technological changes and everything is reflected in the job descriptions so if you do this constantly then um, this skills representation that you will have will also change according to these technological changes and the subsequent demand that the companies have for this so if you don't want to focus on jobs that you are looking uh, for right now you can use also this question that we asked when you uh, registered for the workshop um, about uh, what do you want to be in the future, let's say in three years, what do you want to be? And then you can look up those roles to see, okay, what kind of skills um, do they need? So then you can make up a plan and in three years get that job with uh, having the required skills. Would you like to share your process and uh, what uh, results uh, you came up with? Okay. You can also look into the... Yes, you can see it. Just they didn't make the graph mm. 
Yeah, this is a pretty clear even without a girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sketch. For now, yes. Sketch was the most mm -hmm. requested. Mm -hmm. Do you use this? No, I don't. I use another one. Mm. What do you think of um, the, this finding? Uh, <laughs> that I should uh, use Sketch instead. Instead of the one I'm using now. Mm. All right. Any other things you understood from this? Mm, that um, I might also start using uh, other prototyping tools, tools for interfaces. Does uh, Sagar want to share? Yes, I can. Okay, let us know what was your process. Yeah, so I had a few of the job profiles in my mind before, which I have been through. And I was looking forward to like kind of apply maybe in future after a month. So I went again back to those profiles and collected the skills which were there in the job descriptions. Mm. Use them to put in the job. So I specifically looked for senior roles and tech lead roles. Yeah. So based on those, I had findings like there are a few new skills which I need to learn. So I need to study about design pattern, architecture basically, web architectures. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Those are like new things which I had to work on. Plus I see like React is still one of the most in demand skill. So yeah, I should improve over there. Yeah, this is good. I also find that when looking at the job descriptions, you discover some things that you need to do the job, but uh, maybe you didn't know that those things are kind of taken um, as uh, a given that, of course, you have these things and, uh, um, and maybe you have focused so much on uh, the tools that we hear about, like the coding languages that you miss some other things. For example, when it comes to the infrastructure or the testing or the automation of the testing and these kind of things that you don't uh, necessarily think about the first thing. Yeah. Did you find this exercise uh, beneficial for your learning or job search processes? Yes, a lot. Uh, gives a clear visualization, clear idea of the most in demand skills, what one should improve. Mm, yeah. Yeah, for the job search particularly, uh, this exercise can also help with the branding. So in the example of our software developer, um, let's say that uh, you were interested in um, five different fields when you start doing this exercise with uh, more fields and more companies um, but you see for example like we can take this 10 ed tech companies as well and not only fields like you can see which of the companies are hiring the software developers and then focus more on those so it's the same with the fields that you would know for example that um, um, the 
ed tech companies are hiring more software developers and the health tech companies are something like that. So that helps you then to brand yourself more towards um, being a professional in the ed, ed tech space rather than in the health tech space uh, to attract more of these opportunities. So the more precise you are, the better uh, results you get when um, these companies are looking for people, even passive people on LinkedIn or everywhere. Having these keywords really helps. So if you are interested in ed tech, for example, and you have identified that this industry has a lot of jobs for you, Put keywords about this field into your profile so that it helps uh, you being discovered from such companies. Um, and um, the same goes also for the networking. So now that you know that the health tech space, in our example, doesn't have so many opportunities for you then you can maybe um, move towards networking more in the ed tech space um, with events organized for such companies or things that are happening around that area or joining groups on LinkedIn, for example, in that area instead of the health tech ones in this example. And all of these little things can bring you opportunities. Now, for the learning, by analyzing these skills um, um, in the future, also like adding to these, um, this thing that you started constantly uh, will give you um, the real time um, demand right now uh, for the roles that you are interested in particularly and not uh, uh, generally like what do people think that um, uh, is in demand or um, what um, uh, what the general market demand is but particularly for you and the roles that you want either right now or in the future what are those skills that you need so it helps you uh, be in touch with this uh, real time market demand and also how it evolves. So it's good to add uh, new job descriptions that you see to add those skills from there into this set to make it better and uh, be on top of this uh, development. Um, and then you can tweak your learning plan accordingly as the technological changes get reflected also in these job descriptions. So then in this uh, example that we had, I added the rest of the skills here as well that uh, were more seen than others. Um, and we have some peaks here, Python, and Java and Scala and communication skills. This is something that we've talked about in the previous workshops and community discussions as well, that the soft skills are something that we also um, shouldn't miss. And this exercise helps us to really see like uh, uh, what of these we also need to work on because it's not just the hard skills, but it's also about these soft skills. And the soft skills are even uh, future proof because you can adapt them into many situations and this, the hard skills will change when new things come up, but the soft skills will remain more or less the same. So it's also very good to invest in these soft skills and then in the hard skills that are most in demand for the positions that you in, are interested. Um, so we are reaching the end of this workshop, but I would like to still ask 
you um, whether you see that you could continue with this exercise whether you find it interesting and helpful that um, it this is something that you want to continue doing or is it like too time consuming for you or any any other concerns or what do you think about it I will continue. I think it is useful. And uh, yes, it is time consuming, but um, more visual rather than um, the list of open positions. Yeah, I do think the same. Like it takes a little bit more of the time to collect this data and yeah, keep it. But it, at the end, like, it gives a good overview of what we need to do and where we can like work on more. Yeah, so yeah, it's a bit uh, time consuming to do it, um, but it is useful. And um, um, at Amplify, we are also working to figure this out so that we can make it less time consuming like uh, since we are generating job matches we could also do this analysis but it will still take us some time before we can provide such analytics but yeah until then a bit of uh, manual work uh, <laughs> will be needed for this but um, it can really uh, guide you much better with what you want to do. Yes, uh, definitely with this exercise, it is easier to think of a career plan. It is not that overwhelming anymore. That's uh, all from our side uh, for today. And uh, thanks a lot for attending. It was nice to have this workshop with you and uh, explore this uh, topic.